Well, hello again and welcome back. Um, sorry it's been a couple of weeks since our last video, but we finally did get around to making the third and final video on our gear list. Um, we hope you enjoy it. It's, uh, again, way too cold and windy to be doing this outside, so we're going to head on in the house and take care of it. All right, the first thing we have is our cook set. This is our stove. It is a Snowpeak Gigapower, and this is the one that does not have the automatic starter. Um, so it's a little bit lighter, and it doesn't have that part to fail because they usually do. Next, I have this pot um, stabilizer. This hooks to the bottom of the 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 fuel canister and the reason we're using this is because our pot which I'll talk about in just a minute is kind of bigger it's bigger than most of them so it's going to be a little bit more unstable so this will help keep uh, keep us from knocking over our cook our food while we're cooking it the next thing I have of course is the mandatory big lighter and our pot is a tokes 1300 milliliter pot titanium we are going to be cooking food for two people so we wanted something that was big enough to have plenty of water for both our meals and for drinks if we wanted to have that and all of that will go inside the pot this will go in the bottom the stove will wrap up in just this handkerchief is just to help keep this from moving around and scratching up the pot and it can also be used for drying off the pot. And the fuel will go on top and then the lid, it usually fits better, and then it all goes in that little sack right there. Our spoons are Snowpeak titanium pots or <laughs> spoons with a shiny bowl. And we have painted them different colors so that they'll, if we put leave them on the ground or on a rock, they'll stand out more easily so we can find them. We've heard of a lot of people leaving their spoons behind. So this way they'll, they'll be more obvious and we won't leave them behind, hopefully. We also have, uh, we are going to be doing freezer cooking or freezer bag cooking. So we will be putting boiling water into our a freezer bag that has our meal in it and then it will sit in this cozy and then finish cooking that way and these are by anti-gravity gear and we each have one of those and then we each have one of these ziploc um, lock lid I forget what they're called there are two cups we're gonna use these as bowls we can use them as cups they're microwavable safe so we can put hot water in them without worrying about melting them. The Talente jars are not microwavable safe, so they will melt if you put hot things in them. So we could cold soak if we wanted to, or don't really plan to do that, but this has a, serves a lot of functions. And then for our food bags, we each have, we're gonna be each carrying our own food, and we have the z Packs bear bags for those. So that is our cook system. Moving on now to the electronics. Uh, we have a lot more electronics than most people. So therefore we've decided that we're each gonna carry the Anchor 21,000 milliamp hour power banks. And these things are uh, heavy as boat anchors, but we, we really couldn't figure out any other way around it. We considered using a solar panel, but uh, decided that would be less practical than, having, than just having the power banks. Uh, for charging up all of our electronics, especially the power banks, we have the Anchor 4-port quick charger, or I guess they call it the IQ charger. Uh, also, this thing is kind of heavy, but I think it'll be well worth having the option of, of charging up four different ports at one time. Um, coming down, we have here just a various collection of different uh, charging cords. Uh, unfortunately, our electronics use two different types of charging ports. Some of them use the USB type C. Uh, others use the, the uh, more standard micro USB, so we need to have uh, cords for both. Um, this little thing here is simply a, uh, a universal 
card reader. I can plug in different size cards or even a USB flash drive to help transfer files between the phones and, and the uh, pad. Fee and I will each be carrying the phones. Uh, this one's just a dummy. My phone's obviously filling right now, but uh, we'll be using both for video and photography. My phone is the uh, Samsung Galaxy S7. Thea's is the Galaxy S8. Uh, for sound quality, <laughs> which uh, we hope is going to be a, no, won't be a problem, I'm using this pretty large Rode microphone. Um, it's kind of bulky, but uh, we've tried it out and it really does uh, help a lot with quality audio, especially in, in the wind, uh, blocking out that wind noise. We're each carrying the uh, Petzl Tika rechargeable headlamp. Um, again, another, another reason we need these two power banks is because we have so many electronics that require uh, recharging. We're not going to be carrying anything that's battery powered. Everything can be, uh, can be recharged or rechargeable battery. This is the uh, Galaxy Tab A 10.1 inch uh, pad. Uh, this thing is also pretty heavy, but because I'm going to be editing videos on trail, um, I experimented with trying to edit on my phone and it just wasn't possible. Uh, I've got big hands. <laughs> And my eyesight isn't that great, especially looking at close-up objects. So trying to edit videos on, on my phone, on a screen this, well, a screen that size, I don't know how people do it, honestly. I can barely do it on this. Um, we also have the InReach Mini that we'll be using uh, to track our progress on the trail and stay in contact with family back home. We each have a set of earbuds to listen to music, podcasts, whatever. And then finally, I'm going to be using uh, this UltraPod 2 tripod to, for uh, filming and also as kind of a selfie stick. I've modified this one. I took a, I don't know how apparent it is on camera, but I, I took a, a magnetic mount like you usually use for a, a, to put on the dashboard of your car and what it does that allows me my my regular phone case has a, a, a metal disc on the back of it so i can then just slap the phone on it sticks i can pull it back off real quick it makes for a, a a much faster application and then removal than having to use some of the other clamp type systems that uh, most people use so that pretty much sums up the electronics Okay, next we come to our water filtration or water treatment system. We are going to be using the SteriPen. And this, uh, this method uses ultraviolet light to basically render any bacteria or virus in the water unable to reproduce so it doesn't cause illness. We have used um, different variety or different versions of this on many, many trips and we've really, really liked it. It's worked very well, we've never gotten sick. Um, we have used the, um, the, the Sawyer Squeeze, but um, we just really didn't like it very much. It's really time consuming and kind of tedious. And when you have to filter a lot of water, it just, we didn't really enjoy it. So we've decided to go with this. This is rechargeable and we are each going to carry one. So we have, it's the ultra version of of the steri pen and to put our to collect our water and to use the steri pen we're just using a plastic water bottle that's a little bit bigger around than the smart water bottles and the life water bottles so we can set them inside and what we'll do is i've marked half a liter and one liter on here um, the steri pen will will sterilize both half a liter and one liter so most of the time we're gonna be doing one liter. So I have it marked and then we'll, we'll when we're not using it, we'll store a uh, water bottle in it. And then to collect water in some of those more difficult collection areas, like a shallow seep or something, I just took the bottom of a Sawyer squeeze bag and cut it off so I can make it like a scoop and it weighs nothing and it'll just slip inside this bottle so 
that's what we're going to use for our water collection and treatment. And then for me, um, I'm going to be using smart water bottles or life water bottles. And I, this is just a, a platypus hose that screws onto it. It fits perfectly. I'm going to set it down inside my pocket, side pockets of my backpack upside down. And then this, I have a clip on my sternum strap where this will clip and then I have easy access to it. If I don't use a hose, I don't tend to drink as much. So um, I, this is the route that we're gonna go for, for drinking. So we'll have the capacity to do between four and six liters of water per, per each of us. So that is our water treatment system. In this pile, we have some things that kind of really don't fall into any special category, so I'm just lumping them all together. Uh, <clears throat> starting off on this side, we each are carrying a uh, mosquito head net by C to Summit. I don't think I need to pull those out. Everybody knows what a mosquito head net looks like. Um, these little containers here, each contain a, a packed towel, a micro packed towel. And uh, some people don't carry towels, but we did want to have something we could use to, to wipe off, dry off with. And this is a tiny piece of fabric, but it's super absorbent. And I actually have used it to um, dry myself off after taking a shower. And it does a fairly decent job. So uh, this weighs practically next to nothing. I think the, the little carabiner it's attached to weighs twice as much as the, the towel itself does. This uh, little orange pouch here is a waterproof wallet. That's what I'm going to use to carry uh, money, uh, credit cards, identification, my PCT permit and fire permits, basically any paperwork or documents that I need to carry uh, along with me. Um, Thea and I will each be carrying a folding knife. Uh, this is the, they're both made by the company called Ontario. This is their RAT1 and the RAT2. And uh, for any knife geeks out there, uh, these both have D2 steel blades, which basically means that they're going to stay sharp the whole length of the trail. That's a, it's a, a high quality blade steel. Last thing I want on that trail is a, is a dull knife. So the one major luxury item I'm carrying with me, and I have caught a lot of flack for this, but uh, this small pair of binoculars. Um, I never go hiking without binoculars. Uh, there's just too much stuff I want to look at. And although these, I don't know the exact weight, they're around 10 ounces, I think, which a lot of people may think is excessive weight. But uh, again, I, I, for six months on the trail, I, I want to have some binoculars to check out all the cool stuff I see on the way. Um, this bag here is by who? Z-Packs. <laughs> Z-Packs, yeah, thank you. A little Z-Packs uh, lightweight bag that has our repair kit. And it's just got, um, this is a patch kit for our inflatable mattresses, a few, a few zip ties that are good for repairing almost anything. Uh, some tenacious tape, um, a spare, a uh, little spare lines for the um, quilt, uh, an extra lighter, and Tiny little pair of scissors. I don't know what other junk we got in here, but anyway, oh well, and a little, actually a little uh, uh, flash card or SD card uh, case that has a couple of safety pins and sewing needles in it. So that's pretty much the repair kit. And the last item is uh, this is a pouch that I carry on my left on the left strap of my uh, my backpack. And it's stuff that I like to have handy whenever I need it. Um, this is arguably another luxury item, although it doesn't really weigh much. But it's a, uh, it's just a thermometer. It's a, and actually a, a very accurate thermometer. It wasn't cheap to buy this thing. But uh, everybody on the trail is always talking about how hot they think it is or how cold it was or something like that. And over the years, I've come to carry a thermometer because I'm just curious to know how hot is it really how cold is it really <laughs> and it's yeah kind of a, it's a toy but i like to have it uh, a compass 
something that uh, everybody should carry and my my reading glasses I have to have unfortunately in the past couple of years I have to have those with me pretty much constantly and uh, the final item is a uh, just a, uh, a sharpie with a little bit of uh, luco tape wrapped around it for well you guys know what luco tape is for so that pretty much wraps up the odds and ends all right some more items that we have here we are taking a just a small little ball to roll our feet on it's got little spiky things that's just rubber so that it uh it's fairly lightweight and uh, we're not taking the cat <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, anyway, we will be taking this to roll our feet out and roll our muscles out if we need to. Of course, sunscreen. Um, this is some SPF lip balm. We both will be taking polarized sunglasses. Um, these, I can't remember the brand, but they were just a kind of a generic brand off of Amazon, these are Ken's. And these are uh, Foster Grants that, for, that I'm going to be taking. And then this is our first aid kit. It is also in a Z-Packs bag or a little Z-Packs um, pack. We're gonna put something on it so that we can tell that it's the first aid kit, so we're not getting them confused with our repair kit. And I'll open it up for you and show you what's inside. So we have Luco tape, an assortment of medications. We've got anti-diarrheal, we've got ibuprofen, we've got uh, Benadryl, um, some other pain medications, some alcohol wipes, just just a collection of miscellaneous medications and such. And got a tick puller, a magnifying glass, just in case we have uh, slivers or something that we need to be able to see close up. We have some corn pads, some triple antibiotic single use packets. There's six of those in there. Fingernail clippers, some lip balm, Vaseline, and a set of tweezers. So that's pretty much all that's in our first aid kit. Once we leave Kennedy Meadows and get ready to charge up into the Sierras. We're going to have to add a few more items to our our pack kit to uh, make it safe to traverse through the mountains. So the first thing that we're going to be looking at is we're each going to be using uh, a set or a pair of uh, Hill Sound micro spikes. Uh, that's what they look like on my shoe, size 14 <laughs> Merrill Moabs. Um, and they fit in a bag like this. The, the, the bag's pretty substantial, but we're probably going to keep them in there because we don't want the sharp spikes from the, from the, uh, the micro spikes poking holes and everything. We're also going to be using uh, adding ice axes. These axes is the Camp Corsa. Uh, far and away, I think the most popular ice axe among through hikers that go into the Sierras. It weighs next to nothing. I think eight ounces, which is crazy light. Um, but I decided to go with the Gravel, I think it's Gravel or Gravel, I'm not even sure how to pronounce the name of this company, G1. Um, it's about 15 ounces, so it's quite a bit heavier than the Camp Corsa, but I opted for it because this may be a little bit of paranoia, but I'm a pretty heavy guy, I weigh well over 250 pounds, and I just don't know, don't know if I want to trust my life to a super lightweight aluminum axe, so I went with one made of steel. Um, plus, yellow is my favorite color, so hey, can't go wrong there. We're also required to add bear canisters to our um, kit shortly after we leave Kennedy Meadows. There's an area of about 300 miles where you're required to carry a bear canister. So we have, we have two, the, uh, the BV500 and the BV450. Um, the obvious question is why aren't we both carrying this full-sized one? Basically, it's because we have worked very hard at compacting uh, uh, the, the food we're going to be bringing into a very small space. Um, we've done a lot of dehydrated and freeze-dried meals, uh, low bulk type meals. So I think that we can probably get by, hopefully we can get by 
by using these two here. Now, I'll show you the trekking poles, and, and this isn't really an appropriate place to show them because we're obviously both going to be using trekking poles from the very beginning. But uh, we didn't really have anywhere else to fit them in, so I stuck them in right here. And uh, Thea's, I'm sorry, these are actually my trekking poles, the Lecky Makalu. Uh, these are aluminum poles, um, a little bit heavier than, than uh, carbon poles that some people like. I've used carbon poles before, and after having one break, I decided that I was going to stay with aluminum. And Thea's, <laughs> Thea's trekking poles, also by Lecky, the Lecky Cressida. And these are actually designed specifically for women. The grip on them is a little bit smaller. Uh, both poles use cork grips. Uh, we are going to be swapping out if you can see that they have this, these tiny little trekking baskets on them right now, uh, which a lot of people even take those off. But when we go into Sierras, particularly if there's uh, going to be a, a high snow this year, we're going to swap those out for regular snow baskets. And the last thing, <laughs> again, it doesn't really belong here among our Sierra gear, but I didn't have anywhere else to put it on. This is just a simple sit pad that I'm going to be carrying uh, to cushion my big fat butt. Um, it's just four sections out of a standard Z-Rest sleeping pad, and uh, no surprise there. I'm sure everybody has seen those before. And last but not least is our poop set. Um, this is Ken's. Ken's. Um, we are both going to be carrying the Deuce of Spades. These are very familiar to anybody that hikes. And um, instead of baby wipes or toilet paper, we are going to be using these little uh, tissue coins. You just add a few drops of water to them and they open up into a pretty, pretty large cloth. 10 inches by 10 inches? About 10 by 10, and um, it's pretty tough. And so you could get easily clean up after you use the bathroom <laughs> um, with just one of these, and they weigh hardly anything. So he's going to be doing that. I'm going to be doing something a little bit different, <laughs> and I've never tried it before, so I don't know how long I will stick with it, but I'm going to go more with kind of a bidet type of system. And this is not what I'm going to actually be, be using to carry my water for the bidet. I'm at, this is a, a one liter platypus. I am going to be getting a uh, half liter platypus just to, to make it a little bit smaller. I'm not going to be a, needing a full liter to wipe, I hope. But basically what you do is put water in it. You do your thing. Um, and... Uh, some people will use things like sticks and rocks to clean up kind of the bulk <laughs> of what's there. And then they use this to rinse um, and clean the rest of it off. And then they use soap to clean their butt with and their hands. So I'm not going to take this whole big thing because it's kind of heavy. I'm going to move it into a smaller container. But um, so but no pun intended ha huh? uh, my deuce of spades my basically my uh, bidet and then to clean my hands and then for if I need extra cleanup I have a few of the, the tissue coins in my pack as well these the tissue coins I am going to be using for nightly cleanup uh, at the end of the hiking day to clean my feet clean my body um, just to kind of clean up at the end of each hiking day. So we'll have some more of those in our path too. But that is our poop cleanup system. Okay, well that wraps it up for the uh, three video series showing the gear we're gonna be taking with us on our Pacific Crest Trail through hike. Uh, sorry, if, sorry if we got a little bit long-winded at times. We were trying to be thorough um, and we're still new at this and we're learning it. But uh, we do have a few more videos planned for the future uh, related to the PCT, including, well, I have ideas for one more, one more gear video that I think uh, it's a little, bit, <laughs> a little bit unusual. I think you guys will get a kick out of it, but I'm not going to give it away. You'll just have to wait for it. Um, in the meantime, anything else you want to... I'm going to be doing a series of videos on some of the food that we're going to be taking, how I'm prepping uh, some of our meals, and just to kind of give you an idea of what we're doing and maybe give you some ideas that you might be able to use yourself. All right. <laughs>
Let's get out of here, it's cold. <laughs> I'm wearing sandals, of course, and training for the PCT.